Hello friends, a warm welcome. Today we are going to learn about like how can we create an irrigation system which is based on IoT that is Internet of Things. So here we will learn the concept of uh, Internet of Things as well as we will learn how can we control a DC pump uh, over an internet by taking into account uh, some sensor readings like the soil moisture and the temperature and humidity. Also at the end of the session we will discuss uh, an extension to this project like how can you extend this project so that uh, based on the different kind of a plants uh, or different uh, cycles of uh, water pumping can be planned or a different kind of a temperature requirements uh, for different crops can be planned. So stay tuned uh, for the uh, next uh, few minutes and you will have a fantastic time learning about the IoT based irrigation system. So today we are going to build uh, an IoT based irrigation system. In order to build those things, you will require the materials which are being shown on your screen now. So what you will require is a DST11 sensor. So this is a sensor that will measure the temperature and the humidity of the environment. Then we will require a soil moisture sensor. It can be a capacitive or a resistive sensor. But what we are going to use here is a capacitive soil moisture sensor because it is uh, more robust and doesn't get uh, corroded easily with the soil. The third and the foremost important thing that we are going to use here is a node MCU module. Node MCU module is being powered by ESP8266 uh, Wi-Fi chip. So this chip has a capacity of connecting over a Wi-Fi network and at the same time these are various GPIO pins through which you can connect various sensors. The other uh, important part which is required for pumping the water uh, to your plant is the 12 volt DC diaphragm pump. Then we will need a relay to turn on and off the pump. We will need a 12 volt DC adapter to power the pump, a DC jack screw terminal to connect the, the adapter to the relay, pipe for the pump which will connect to the inlet and outlet of the pipe, few jumper wires, a mini breadboard and a USB cable for programming the node MCU. So these were the hardware components that were required. Now we will need require some kind of a software and services which is required. So we will use Arduino ID to program the node MCU module and we will use the ThingStick cloud uh, from the MathWorks company to uh, <coughs> export the data from the uh, sensors coming from the sensors to the cloud so that we can use this sensor data to monitor the plants and the uh, different activities on the field. So here is a high level concept diagram for you. So at the plant side or you can say at the uh, plant side uh, where your crop is there so you will have all the hardware installed over there you will have a motor pump you will have an uh, DST11 sensor for temperature and humidity you will have a soil moisture sensor and the node MCU module so these all will be located on your plant side and uh, the data from these sensors will go to the cloud and these cloud data you can monitor on any of the clients maybe on the mobile phone or on a computer connected over internet so this is basically you can go through the connection diagram like how can we make the connections uh, of the different uh, sensors. So here is the connection diagram uh, with the node MCU how can you connect the various sensors that are being used in this project. You can check out the connections so what we are going to use is that a pin D1 so pin D1 on the uh, node MCU you are going to connect with the DST11 uh, signal pin D2 you are going to connect to the relay input and 3 volt 3 will be the VCC for most of these devices so you can connect this 3 volt 3 to all the uh, devices uh, sensors and the relays similar to the ground and A0 is the uh, analog pin that you will use to connect the soil moisture sensor so for the soil moisture sensor we should always connect to the analog pin which is located over here as you can see here ADC0 so this is the analog pin why because the soil moisture sensor is an analog sensor and we want to know the various humidity level uh, of the soil by use of this sensor so that will always be connected to the analog pins of the node MCU moving forward uh, how will you connect the pump to the relay so in your relay uh, at the output side you will see three pins common no, normally open and normally closed so we will connect the common directly to the uh, positive of the pump 
and the normally open will connect to the positive of the uh, DC uh, plug adapter and the negative of the DC plug adapter will connect to the negative of the pump. So what does it mean is that uh, when the uh, relay will be on, the, so this circuit, this part of the circuit will get complete and hence uh, the positive of the uh, battery will go to this side and negative of uh, the battery uh, will go to here and the positive will go to the common. So this is how you will connect them. So basically this relay will be used as a switch. So here is the assembly of uh, the circuit on breadboard. So uh, you can take help of this diagram and this diagram to make a connection like this on a breadboard. This should be straightforward. Just be sure that you connect the VCC of the sensors to the VCC supply and do not put vice versa. Do not connect down to the VCC. So make sure that while you are making the connections, everything is connected properly and the sensor uh, signal pins are connected to the node, node MCU as shown in the uh, diagram over here. Once uh, your hardware connections are done, now we are, we'll try to configure our cloud. So in order to configure your cloud, you can go to uh, Thingistic uh, cloud so what you can do at this point, you can log into thingistic.com and if you don't have an account, you can uh, get start. You can click on get started for free. So this is how you. But I already have an account. So what I will do is that I'll just log in. So I think I'm already signed in, and then I will go to the channels okay so I'm not signing so let me just sign in so I will just put on my email id and so I will log into the Thingistic account and here I have these channels uh, I'll just look into my channels go to my channel and here I have already created a channel um, with the name IoT agriculture I'll go to that channel and I can see in the channel set settings you can see you can create a uh, you can give the name of the channel some description you can give and you have to give various fields so these are the fields where you are going to export the uh, value from the sensor so field 1 I have given soil moisture field 2 humidity field 3 temperature so these three things will hold the value of the so the value that we are going to send from node MCU to the cloud and uh, then the pump status and pump switch you can give so the pump status will be like when you are turning on the pump and when you are turning off the pump so if you want to keep a record of that you can give pump status also as a field 4 field 5 though we will not use currently but I give pump switch so this is the field through which we can uh, turn on and off the pump remotely so currently I am giving that as pump switch though we will not use it now but you can plan to use it later so this is how you can create it and then what you need to do is that uh, go to the api keys and take note of this write api key and the read api key so we will be going making use of write api key but later means like when you want to turn on and off the pump you will be able to also make use of the read api key so take a note of this uh, api keys and that's it you are done on the thing stick once that is done you can uh, click on the private view and you can just be here for you the charts will show as empty because you'll be creating it new uh, for me since uh, there are some data already there in the cloud so the charts are uh, there okay now we'll quickly jump uh, back to the slides and so as i mentioned you note down the api keys once you have noted down the api keys now we will work on the program like how we can uh, uh, write this program uh, for the IoT agriculture. So in the program, the three most important thing that you need to do is that first thing is that you want to get the soil moisture and temperature and humidity reading from the sensor. Now based on these values, you want to turn on and off the relay for a specified time. So let's say means your soil is dry and the temperature and humidity also suggests that this is a time perfect time for watering the plant. So what you can do, you can turn on and off the relay for a specified time. So uh, depending on the temperature and the moisture, you can have some timer for the relay. To turn on and off maybe means like you want to water your plant for two minutes or five minutes or ten minutes 
you can uh, specify that kind of a time uh, for the relay to turn on and off. At the same time, you would also want to upload the sensor value to the thing is the cloud for the data telemetry. So when I say data telemetry, so what you mean to do is that you can uh, plot a graph like uh, what are the uh, moisture trends and whether your crop will survive uh, this moisture and this temperature or not. So those kind of a things you can do from the cloud. You can play more on the data, uh, but for that you need to have data. So it is very much crucial that the correct data should go to the cloud. So next thing that we are going to you, uh, do is that uh, we will use our Arduino IDE to program the uh, node MCU. And in order to use Arduino IDE to program node MCU, if you have not done it previously, so what you can do is that you can uh, go to this particular blog. Here you will get a, a brief idea like how you can add node MCU board to your Arduino IDE. It is also, it is very simple. You can go to the Arduino and you can go to the board manager and uh, add this board but i would uh, suggest if you have not done it already please visit this particular blog uh, as shown in the slide over here and uh, you will be able to do that so the other libraries that we are going to use for the programming is one is the dhc library we, will, we are going to use so in order to make use of the dhc sensor we use dhc library so you can again add those two libraries esp826 is wi-fi and dhc library from uh, the Arduino, you go to the tools and manage libraries and you should be uh, able to add these libraries. When you will add the DHC library, you will also be asked to uh, add some additional libraries. Kindly add those as well for it to work. Uh, now I will uh, run you through the uh, various code snippets uh, which are important means like uh, to interface your sensor. So first uh, imp importance is like how you define the input and output pin. So if you have already a prior experience of working with Arduino or any kind of a microcontroller, you should already be familiar with what are input pins and output pins. But just to brief you here, so all the sensors we already make it as input pin and uh, all the devices which we want to control, uh, so we make that as an output pin, pin. So here we want to control relay, so we'll make the relay as an output pin. And uh, we will make the soil moisture pin as input pin and that will connect to the analog input. And and DHT pin will be your uh, again a digital input pin. Next, we would uh, want to make use of a DHT library. So, before making use of DHT library, what you need to do is that you need to define the type of DHT. So, there are partly two different types of DHT pins available in the market. So, those are DHT 11 and DHT uh, 22. Also, I think DHT 1 to 12 is also there. So DHT11 is an elementary and low cost uh, DHT and humidity and temperature device. If you want to go for something which is uh, more professional and more commercial grade, you can go for DHT22. So here we will first create an object of uh, DHT uh, and in your setup you can use DHT.begin. So once you do DHT.begin, you also add a delay of 10 microsecond or 10 sorry 10 millisecond over there because it takes some time to initiate uh, initialize the DHT. So a delay of 10 milliseconds is recommended. Then uh, in order to read the means once the once DHT dot begin function is called, it starts reading the uh, current uh, temperature and moisture sensor from the environment, and you can uh, store those values into a different sense, <coughs> different variables humidity and temperature using these two functions DHT dot read humidity and DHT dot read temperature. Next we would want to make use of the ESP826 Wi-Fi library. So in order to make use of ESP826 library, again you will create a Wi-Fi client object. So we created an object called client, which is of Wi-Fi client type. And we will store the Wi-Fi SSID and password uh, in a variable. So you can store SSID and password in two different variables. And this is the way you can make a connection to Wi-Fi. So you use Wi-Fi.begin method, where you will pass the SSID and password as an argument. And then uh, in a while loop, uh, while WL underscore connected is the status message when once the wireless is connected this will become true so while wi-fi dot status is not connected and this will keep trying and uh, as soon as it will get connected it will come out of this while loop and it will say serial or print it will say wi-fi connected so once you have this wi-fi connected on a serial monitor you know that your wi-fi got connected successfully the other thing that we want, want to do is the uh, interfacing of the soil moisture sensor. So this is very simple. Since the soil moisture sensor is an analog sensor, so we use the analog read function as you can see here uh, with the soil moisture pin. So here we have connected the soil moisture pin to A0. So this will give you the uh, value. This value may range from 400 to 1000 or 400 to 1100. So depending on different moisture level and uh, 
you have to use some kind of experiment here to find like first you put your uh, sensor in a dry soil and see what is the reading it shows and then you put your sensor in a moist soil and see the reading that it shows and based on those readings you can keep a threshold value and you can uh, have that value uh, handy and now the other thing that we want to do is that uh, we want to send the data to the thing is the cloud so for that uh, you already have the api key uh, as you recorded in some time back you store that api key into the uh, into one variable uh, those two api key and your iot server will be api.thingistic.com and you can use the below function to send data to cloud so functions i'll show you just here so here is the function you can see in this function what we are doing is that uh, we are first connecting to the client iot server so your iot server is nothing but api.thingistic.com so this con this makes a connection to the server once, the, once it is connected what we do is that we send our data value as a query string to the uh, server. So the, this is like query string. So this is a query string which we are appending. So in the field one, we are giving soil moisture, field two humidity, field three temperature and field four pump status. So you can see here uh, the values we are uh, putting as an, um, we are putting as a query string. Uh, so here once, once we have the query string ready, we can use a post method to push that uh, data to the api.thingistic.com so this post the data to the api.thingistic.com and once uh, uh, once we have done this thing like client.print post string after that once the data is uh, data has already gone to the server we say client.stop so this is stop the client and we uh, should make sure that we do not call this function very often but every 30 second or 2 minutes or even 5 minutes uh, even 5 minutes you can call this method so that uh, this will keep uh, taking the sensor values for every 5 minutes and send it to you also means like if you want to have a longer duration you can keep it 1 hour or 2 hour like that for it, this function to activate the uh, important thing now is the how you want to control the relay so for controlling relay is very important uh, simple it's like you it's just a digital uh, control so we just said digital right high uh, for relay to turn on and digital right low for this relay to turn off so this is how we can control the relay complete code uh, i will share the link of the complete code in the you can check out the complete code in the comment section below i will place the link over there and uh, you can get the complete code but uh, my suggestion will be to try writing code on your own if you are not able to do then only refer to the complete code for the other thing uh, once uh, you have uh, done the code and you have uh, Kind of make, made everything connected uh, made all the connections possible and uh, you have powered on the device now uh, you should be able to you can open the serial monitor and you should be able to see uh, the data being sent to the cloud and when once you go to the thing is cloud you should see uh, some chart like this so where in the different fields it will start showing the data that has already gone up uploaded so you can see the different charts over there so this is the thing and uh, you can check the code link over here or uh, I have also made a blog on this and have posted it over here so you can check it out. So guys uh, I hope you would have liked the session also uh, I will post a video of the complete project uh, uh, code snippet and a complete video of the project uh, working project can be found on the YouTube link so that also I will share in the comment section below you can check that out. So thank you guys for any kind of a doubts, please contact us at admin at pinwheel.in or you can also WhatsApp us 720 So check our uh, technical blog at pwbottle.wordpress.com Here you will get all the uh, different kind of a projects that uh, we are working on. So yeah, thanks guys. Uh, thank you. Have a nice day. Here, this is our whole uh, setup. So what we have here is the Node MCU. Uh, connected with a, a relay and a soil moisture sensor is connected over here and we have a humidity uh, DST humidity sensor and temperature sensor connected over here we have a tank filled with, filled with water and we have a, uh, a plant so here two plants are there uh, so uh, where we have connected the soil moisture sensor the capacitive soil moisture sensor and we have a dry from pump over here so this is our whole setup and this node MCU is connected via this USB cable to the laptop and that is the whole setup and you can see this uh, 
power is the 12 volt of power is being supplied by adapter uh, to the pump now uh, we will see what is the value being uploaded uh, to the thing speak so here uh, we can see very clearly that the humidity temperature in the soil moisture sensor is going to the thing speak cloud so this is the whole setup so currently you can see the soil moisture reading is 639 and uh, hence uh, the pump is not uh, turned on so we will just change this value uh, to something uh, maybe means uh, where when the soil moisture sensor is like greater than 600 to turn on the motor to just simulate the event so we will change that thing in the code and soon we will come back as you can see here uh, what we have done is that we have made the soil moisture to be greater than 600 then it will return true and when it uh, returns true uh, water pump manager then what we do is that we make the digital ride relay pin high for one second you can see delay is one second here and we make the detail right low so it means that once the temp uh, soil moisture say, is uh, going uh, greater is greater than 600 then we'll turn on the motor pump for one minute uh, that, so for one second that is delay thousand that is one second so as you can see our wi-fi got connected and uh, the temperature is recording so now i'll show you like how it is pumping the water so you can see that the water is being pumped from the uh, input tank to the output container so i am currently uh, uh, making it to f fall onto the output container because my plant is already wet so just to demonstrate it so you can see the soil moisture sensor is being red so if i take out the soil moisture sensor from here so this will pump uh, more frequently because uh, it is more dry so i'll put it inside uh, this plant and then you can see that at regular interval it will uh, pump so currently i have given a value as greater than 600 so currently you can see the soil moisture sensor value is coming at 547 hence uh, uh, it is uh, adequately moist uh, so that's why it is not pumping so now I will transfer this sensor uh, to this particular uh, plant and we will see like what is happening. So currently also the uh, soil moisture sensor is 592 and we have given the threshold of 600. So what I will do I will just put it little bit more up and now you can see that uh, the soil moisture sensor value is coming 780 and hence it, it will start pumping. So you can see this is pumping the water. So it will pump the water you can see it is pumping the water so this is the whole uh, demonstration about uh, this project so I'll again insert it back inside so that it won't pump extra water so you can uh, see the whole setup and this is a very nice project which you can uh, do for your college uh, mini project or maybe a final year project in your college yeah thanks so you can uh, get uh, uh, the video links and all those things on under the youtube and also uh, i'll post a blog link uh, on the youtube comment section you can check out now check out the uh, values that it has uploaded to the thing speak cloud so you can see here uh, this has uploaded uh, today's value over here the different soil moisture sensor values it has recorded uh, for today's date Similarly, you can see the value recorded for uh, your humidity and at the same time even for uh, like uh, <clears throat> the temperature and when was the pump on and off. So this is the pump status 1 and this is the pump status 0 that is uh, coming over here. So this is the uh, 0 and this is the 1 is the pump status. Thank you.